All right, so we have on the bench a couple of quads. Uh, I want to preface before we go any further than this. I'm not going to be talking directly necessarily about any builders or any people or any things in particular other than trying to give some help and um, kind of experience as far as what we do and what I do at Quad Standard Labs in terms of building uh, techniques and kind of specifications. Uh, Again, not trying in any way to talk down or bad about anyone. Um, we at Quad Center Labs have done quite a few bind and flies uh, ourselves that we've built and we've sold a few different brands of their bind and flies, uh, all of which we always go through ourselves with a fine tooth comb uh, and prep and tune and, and individually fly. Um, that's not to say we know what other people do uh, when they sell their bind and flies. Uh, But that's just our standard, so to speak. Um, So these two drones right here uh, were both purchased in November-ish and December-ish 2019 um, from a particular store. Uh, You can probably guess. Uh, It is a bind and fly. It is their basic stock uh, DJI build. Uh, It was, you know, the HD build. Uh, The client that I've, I've sold other drones to in the recent past um ha- after getting my drones uh, asked me to take a look at these and said basically uh he bought one or he bought I, I don't remember i think he bought one and then he bought the second one um but basically he bought them both right around the same time uh they both performed really poorly in the same way uh and he didn't know really what to do with them and so he just kind of shelved them he flew one of them a little bit that's why one of them is a little beat up uh more than the other uh, but pretty much they just they never worked the way he wanted them to. They just didn't ever fly right, um, and he could never really figure out why. Um, I usually don't do too many repairs, but for clients that we build for, we try to do stuff. So told him to send them to me. Um, he told me the, the, the problems he was having, uh, both of them basically identical problems. Uh, both of them under semi-heavy to moderate throttle had weird shutters, uh, and then there were also some issues with the video just basically blacking out at some point. Um, so when I got them, I, I, I did a video, a different video than this one. And I'm not going to show that video really just because it was just really, it, it was just my initial shock and such. And again, and not an effort to not be talking about, about people or things and how people do stuff necessarily. Uh, it just made sense to do a more objective kind of overview after I was done. Uh, so basically taking a look at them out the box, I noticed exactly kind of what one of the big issues were, which was uh, the video signal drop. And this is an issue that gets talked about so much in the DGI groups and all the other groups. Uh, and I want to really just try to emphasize again that this is not about these two particular builds necessarily. Uh, I see this problem uh, in so many various ways in the groups and in user different communities uh, that it all chalks up to build. And when you tell someone that their build is not right, they get get offended and and they don't know really how to react. And they're like, Nope, my build's great. It's perfect. And I don't necessarily ever mean that it's bad building like techniques, like at a base level, like soldering and stuff like that, or assembly. Like it, it has sometimes to do with component selection and application of component. And and we're going to take a look at that. So, We have these two, uh, and it's been boring up to this point. Uh, I have one that I have actually already fixed. Um, It is going to actually be this one. Um, But before we get to what I fixed, I want to show you what we found. So, first of all, these builds are both really quality-ish builds. Now, they're quality builds in the sense that... They have pretty decent hardware, hobby wing hardware. Now, I will tell you from being a vendor of hobby wing, the margins on these are good. And that's why they put these specific ones in here is 
Uh, they're a 30 by 30. Uh, it's easier to work with, but more so 30 by 30s typically these days are cheaper and less usable. And it's an F4. It, but again, this is a very reliable, proven setup. Uh, guys like Gab have flown this stuff, I believe, and, and just lot, lots of different guys have put a lot of packs through this stuff. So the hardware in general is good. Uh, it's an F4 G3 uh, hobby wing stack with the uh, 60 amp <clears throat> 30 by 30 ESCs. I actually have these 30 by 30 ESCs that we put we build with fix with, so they're great. Um, the the problem is is this right here. So you'll see that they have hooked up the uh, power wires, which a great solder work. Let me look at that solder joint. All those solder joints are great. They look really good. Again, build technique seems solid, but they put the power for the air unit on 12 volt connections. Now, 12 volt is not horrible because it's 12 volts and that's great. And this is a two amp, I believe, uh, rated BEC over here on the board. Uh, and, or no, it's actually that one. Uh, sorry, that's the BEC. So that's the regulator. So it's got a two amp regulator, I believe. And so in theory, the amperage is good and the voltage is good. But this is a 4S build. And two problems. The, the 12 volts running through these little tiny pads through all of this to get to the regulator and all that and all the other stuff going on can and usually will cause noise. Um, and can cause not to be able to pull the full amperage. Because a regulator is rated at 2 amps doesn't mean that the traces and that under full loads and everything going on that those that 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 regulator can definitely power the pads at that amperage you got to remember that you know the people that develop this hardware yes they are using spec components and they're telling you the spec but they're not really getting full application performance testing in the sense of using an air unit that you know 700 milliwatts maybe higher even less whatever uh under load on 4s uh, powered through the 12 volt rail, which is really just a small micro trace back over here and all that, all in this mumbo jumbo. And can that really carry, you know, the voltage? So what happens, voltage spikes, different things, again, can cause issues. OSD flickers, uh, SD card stutters, uh, frozen screens, stuff like that can be caused by the, the, issues that can arise from this type of build. So how do you fix it? Well, in a 4S build, it's pretty simple. What we did was we took and moved the pads to the XT or where the XT60 is on the uh, ESCs. Now what this does is it puts the power right at the cap. So the cap for the ESCs and the air unit basically piggybacked off the same cap. We should need no other caps. You know, that's a whole nother discussion. And no longer are we powered at 12 volts. We are powered at full voltage. So that's fine because we're using a full air unit on 4S. If we were using a Vista on 6S, this would be fine. If we were using a 6S machine and a full air unit, we would want to put a regulator between this pad here where we are and this these uh, these wire harness because what we don't want to do again is go back up <clears throat> into the 12 volts up here I don't care how many amps it is I just I'm not going to use that it causes issues again under loads and high voltage spikes and just all kinds of issues uh, mainly again we're going to talk about it, that 12 volt issue oh that's such a, a big issue on 4s so uh, again we are talking 4s machine here the the 12 volt problem here, and the reason why, even if you use a regulator, which let's say this is a 6S machine and I wanna use a regulator, I would use a nine volt regulator on a 6S machine, maybe a 10 volt. Um, I, I don't really care to go to 12 because when you start going to 12 volts, what happens is we start having problems with 4S. So if you have 12 volts and you have 4S, so four cells, and you get a battery, at its low end, three volts, which you shouldn't really take it that low, but you do, then what you'll see is an exponential drop off as you approach 12 volts. Because this amp 
this this two amp 12 volt regulator is really wanting to produce as much 12 volts and 12 volt amperage it can for this big air unit drawing a ton of power it basically will suck dry your your battery in literally seconds so there's base there's a tilting point on like when you're flying and when you get to about like 12.3 volts which again is like 3.1 volts per cell it just drops off a cliff and we actually proved it by flying both of these quads on 4s all the way until they flew out into the ground and we basically had video drop and then the, the drone obviously crashed but what we saw on the osd was from 12 volts to 8 volts it just basically just dropped like a stone once it hit 12. we took this one out just a little while ago and flew it on the new setup and we actually were able to fly to 12 volts and no issues and then it didn't start dropping really heavily until we really punched it at 12 volts uh, but the problem again becomes that 12 volts <clears throat> You don't want 12 volts on a 4S machine um, because a 4S machine is going to get really close to 12 volts. So you want 10 volts on a 4S machine. You can go to 12 volts on a 6S, like a 5 or a 6S, but there's no need. I mean, you're really only feeding it more voltage, which is going to cause more heat. So again, this thing needs 7 to like 4S, like 7 to 16 volts. The more volts you put in, the hotter it's going to get. The lower voltage, obviously you want enough voltage to, to carry the high VTX power. So that's why I say nine, maybe 10 at the most, 10 and a half, you know, is basically what we run our, some of our regulators at. Um, but really 10 and a half is like the optimum, like that 10, the nine to 10, 10 and a half is just the perfect area. So huh, that's how we basically fixed this one. Now there's a whole other problem with these two drones which was they came shipped uh, with firmware 367, which was just a huge disappointment also, knowing these came in December and 367 was obsolete in like February of 19. Uh, basically, they couldn't even run S-Bus fast on these. Uh, so we've now updated the flight controller. Uh, it's now running 4.2. We've thrown a tune on it and we've flown it. It's really pretty good. Uh, we're going to make that tune available on our downloads page uh, once we kind of refine it. Uh, the next step is we got to update this one, get it also fixed on the pads over here, uh, and go get it tested, and then we'll get these things back to our client. Uh, but I just wanted to, again, walk through this and just say, look, great build. Again, awesome solder points. Everything looks good, but you can't power it from, from the 12-volt pad, especially for this 4S machine. Uh, you're just going to kill batteries and you're just going to have unstable power and that just causes issues. So uh, move those things away, get them over here and you should be good uh, to fix up yours. And this goes for any of those plug and play flight controllers. If you're having issues with those, check the regulators. I bet you you're having a similar issue. Uh, just pull those power pads out and use a real regulator off to the side or direct voltage if you can. Uh, remember, Vista can go to 6S. This one can only go to 4S because it's a full air unit. Uh, but yeah, that's that. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope I help. All right. Peace.